Hello there, today I'm going to show you how to main Link. Link, being the second most popular character of Nintendo, has been the center of attention these past two years since Breath of the Wild came out. And naturally, he would receive some well-deserved buffed in Smash Ultimate to reflect his new self in Breath of the Wild. So, starting by his changes. Uh, like most characters in Smash Ultimate, like I said in previous videos, uh, he will receive some general buffs um, to make the character more consistent. So first of all, there's the speed, speed buff, the less ending lag and less landing lag. So it makes the character more consistent overall and can combo easier than before. So now for Link's main changes and revamp uh, in his movesets. First of all, he no longer has the hookshot for the grab, so he only has a standard grab like most characters. And this also means he no longer can perform a uh, hookshot grab, so he can't use his side grab to um, recover. Which is kind of a debuff in s some sort of way, but it's also a buff for grabbing. Um, since the hookshot in previous game made Link very vulnerable when he didn't uh, grab his opponent directly. So if he misses, he has the hookshot gave him a lot of ending lag, so that was not good for him. So I would say this is a half buff. And other thing significant. Um, towards Link's moveset is uh, the remote bomb. The remote bomb is quite a big buff in my opinion because now we can control when the bomb can uh, explode whenever you want can do some crazier setup and the bomb doesn't explode until you say so and you can continuously throw it at your opponent and uh, keep pressure on uh, the opponent. Some people would say the remote bomb is a slight debuff compared to the old uh, traditional bomb because of how you have to input uh, twice to make the bomb explode. So, so yeah, and the fact that you have to detonate a second time makes uh, Link have twice as much ending lag as before. One other thing that I didn't mention about Ling is that now whenever he is at 0% he can perform a sword beam with a side smash. Uh, it doesn't have to be fully charged, you can do it whenever. Um, and it doesn't work with a jab, as you can see here. And uh, I don't really see this move being um, any useful whenever or whatever because it only deals 6 damage and um, you have to stay at 0% as soon as you get hit by anything you wouldn't be able to do this move um, the only thing I like about this is that it's a neat detail from uh, I think the very first Zelda game ever whenever you had full health at the beginning of the, of the game Right after grabbing the the sword from the old man, um, Link could swing his sword, uh, however, and would pop out a sword beam, um, which is a cool change and nice detail that he added. However, it's not really useful at all, to be honest. So that's about it for. Link's changes and Young Link's changes. So now we'll move on to the actual good stuff, which is learning the basic moves. Yeah! Before we start talking about Link's basic move, I just want to say that all of the Link 
can block projectiles with their shield um, as long as they hold their position. If they do um, like an idle move, it will cancel it. Like that. Um, and it doesn't apply to all of Link's front, so if he if you shoot uh, at the foot, it will still go through, or the head. So first of all, we're gonna talk about his jab attack, which is pretty standard. It hits three times, one, two, three. Um, the only changes from the last game is that now it's easier to lock your opponent within your first two hit, and the third hit uh, deals more knockback and damage than in previous game. So it's easier to set up um, edge guard, as you can see. Um, it goes almost as far as the 5 here, so it goes pretty far if you want to push your opponent off the ledge. And now for the tilt attacks, um, it's pretty basic. Link uh, swings his sword once towards the direction he's pointing at. Um, one thing to note about this attack is that it always goes to the direction where Link is facing. So let's say for example you're hitting him from the top. Um, he'll still go in that same direction as you can see here. Um, and the changes from this move from the previous game is that it has slightly more ending lag. He holds his position pretty long. For up tilt, he has a new animation that uh, makes him start swinging his sword from the back of his head towards the front. Um, this move has a little bit of downside since uh, his sword doesn't go completely down in front of him like his fourth tilt. So sometimes this move makes Link uh, a bit harder to hit the opponent in the in front of him. Like if it was um, Pichu or Olimar, this move would be really difficult to hit him. It also deals less damage, so that's also a pro and a con since when it deals less damage, it's easier to do combo. So let's say for example he's at 0% for an average character, but easier to make 3 combo up tilt. And other than that, the down tilt, it's uh, fairly standard, um, doesn't really do that much. Um, can do some small combos if you can connect your move quick enough, but it's not especially reliable since this move has slightly more ending lag than before. It could be done at low percentage, but if higher than 50, this combo wouldn't be able to be applied. Uh, one small thing to note with the down tilt, it's no longer possible to uh, perform a meteor spike uh, when your opponent is in the air. So let's say for example, as you can see it's no longer possible. For Link's dash attack, which is fairly standard, however powerful, um, it is the move that is taken from Smash 4. Um, it's basically a smash attack. Like, it's literally, quite literally, a smash attack. It's slow but powerful, and um, it's tricky to use since it has a lot of starting and ending lag. Um, so. It's really situational of a move since you can't abuse his dash attack like um, in Brawl and past games. Since then, um, Link's sword only do a little swing when doing a dash attack, but now he does a large swing and it requires more time to perform a second attack following that. 
So essentially this is quite literally a smash attack, but in a dash attack. For those people who knows how to play Ling, this is literally the translation of the dash attack. Uh, this move is only applicable to the standard Link. The other two Links, Young Link and Toon Links, um, all have the normal dash attack, which is a little swing of the sword. Um, so yeah. And now for Link's smash attack, um, starting with the forward smash, like I said uh, previously, uh, when Link is at 0%, he would do a sword beam when doing a forward smash. Um, and only when he does his forward smash. It doesn't apply to any other type of smash, uh, not even a forward tilt, so this is exclusive to forward smash. Um, so Link's forward smash is fairly standard, hits twice, and I think it changed since Smash 4 where before that Link was able to uh, knock back his opponent with his first hit, but since Smash 4 it is only the second hit that does the knockback. Um, similarly to Toon Link in Brawl. Um, so yeah. And the things that he improved upon this move is that both hits have less ending lag and hits faster and deals more consistent damage than before. So it's easier to follow up the attack. And now for Link's up smash, which uh, hasn't been altered in any way, it's uh, exactly the same thing. It swings three times in the air, and the third hit being the knockback hit. Um, this move is super powerful since it has a lot of active frame um, because of how long um, Link swords, swings his sword in the air, uh, covering a lot of range around him as well, but mostly behind his back. If you can see where uh, the back of his sword goes further than in front of him. So yeah, and this move can KO as little as 100% and it's easier to KO your opponent if um, your opponent is at the tip of Link's sword. So as you can see here, he, Young Link went further than before. And finally for the down smash, which is also fairly standard, it's uh, in front and back. Uh, similarly to Ike's down smash and the down smash has a sweet spot now uh, so if your if your opponent is further away from Link's sword so at the tip it would deal slightly more damage and knock back than if it was closer to Link so normally it would only deal 19.2 damage but if I was slightly away it would deal 20 as you can see on the side 20.5 not a big change but it um, makes this move slightly easier to be able to kill your opponent in a particular situation so it also reaches slightly further in front of him and now on to Link's special move the first one being the neutral B which is uh, again the bow from all previous Smash game. Um, the only thing that this has been changed is that um, now the arrow appears slightly larger when after being shot from the bow, so it's easier for everyone to see where the arrow is in the air. Um, one other feature that they changed for the arrow is that if you have an arrow that hit the ground, you or your opponent can pick it up as an item and throw it. Which is a cool feature again. Um, it has no advantage or disadvantage since you can benefit from it the same way as your opponent. So yeah. One other thing about Link's arrow is that it travels pretty far even though it's really not necessary. 
So, as you can see here, it goes almost to the 20. And in my opinion, it's really not necessary since it also goes to the ground at that point. If you were shooting at this distance, it would go on the ground at the 5. So, this is really a specific feature of the arrow that I don't think it would be useful in any way. So this would only be useful in a larger stage, like uh, the temple. So if that's your style, we can benefit from this uh, little neat feature. But overall, it's just to point out that it goes pretty far. And now for Link's side special, which is the boomerang. And they have changed its uh, Gale Boomerang to a more traditional boomerang that functions um, pretty much the same way as Toon Link's and currently Young Link's boomerang. So basically you throw it and it, it hits once if you throw it at your opponent. And it also hits your opponent when it comes back to you, like that. And previously the Gale Boomerang only hits your opponent when you directly hit at it and when it comes back it would drag your opponent back to you because it's made up of wind and stuff so yeah it drags you back. Um, other than that it didn't have too many changes from the other two links Boomerang except that it goes slightly further. As you can see here, it goes pretty far. Approximately to the 5. It goes pretty far. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. And now for Link's biggest change yet, which is the remote bomb. Uh, we have a lot of things to talk about this move since uh, it is a new move that they develop for this character. So basically, um, the remote bomb can be used as an item whenever you throw it at your opponent. It functions basically as Diddy's banana except that it doesn't do quite any damage. Um, it could be used for edge guarding and quickly after um, hitting your opponent off stage you could detonate it to make your opponent more vulnerable since the blast radius of this remote bomb is slightly bigger than the traditional bomb. Um, and this bomb also has slightly bigger knockback um, and slightly better damage as well. Uh, the only thing bad about this is that when your opponent is holding the bomb so basically when your opponent is holding the bomb, Link cannot um, made, it, made the bomb detonate while the opponent is holding it. So Link would do a, a weird ghost animation where he tries to summon another remote bomb. Um, belt, this also applies when... Um, Link is holding it, so basically if Link is holding it and you try to uh, detonate it while he's holding it, you'll simply just throw it again. And this, what this means is that um, he no longer can do the, the self-damaging recovery from the, the old traditional bomb since it was a time bomb. I can show you with Young Link instead. So basically, the bomb would hit Young Link and he would do a second up B after being hit. Which is, uh, has how Smash works. Whenever you get hit after um, doing an up B, you can still do another up B after getting hit. Uh, however, you can't do that since you have to remotely detonate it and Link can't do that while he's holding the bomb, he will simply throw it away, which is impossible for him to redo this uh, 
type of recovery. Um, one other thing that you probably notice is whenever um, the bomb is in play, uh, if you wait for about 30 seconds, the bomb will still detonate by itself. There we go. Has happened at least twice while I was talking. It was pretty distracting. So yeah, basically this is everything you have to know with the bomb. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with the bomb since now you can use it both as an item and a bomb. Uh, you can do some crazy stuff with this uh, that I'll show you later in the combo section. And now for Link's last special move which is his up B recovery. Uh, this move hasn't been altered in any way. Um, one thing that I notice is that now Link has two separate vocal clips whenever he does this move on the ground and in the air. So first listen to the ones on the ground and the one in the air. They are very specific for some reason. I don't know why they didn't use the same clip for both moves, um, but yeah. Uh, on a technical level, this move has way more knockback than before, and has a lot of active frame, as long as Link is swinging, um, doing his spin attack, um, this move will hit your opponent whenever and if your opponent is rolling into you. So this move is really good at spacing your opponent and um, it is much more powerful when used on the ground than in the air. Uh, this move sometimes can be used for KOs whenever you're pushing your opponents off the ledge. So let's say, um, let's say your opponent's at 50. This can potentially just KO your opponent when you're at the ledge. Um, however, the knockback in the air is slightly lower than uh, on the ground for balancing purposes, obviously. Um, if it had more knockback or equally, um, or had equally amount of knockback as on the ground, this move would be kind of broken. Um, so this is basically everything you need to know about his special move. Uh, if you want to see his recovery range, it's uh, pretty good actually. It's really hard to edge guard a link doing um, not B unless you hit from the top of his head um, directly and very precisely on his head. And now for Link's aerial attacks, which I said previously that now all of his move has less landing lag, so basically whenever he hits the ground after doing an aerial move, he could quickly do a follow-up move. Which as opposed to the previous game, Smash 4, uh, this would take a lot longer for Link to make a reaction. Um, and almost all of his move comes out faster. So yeah, starting by the neutral air, which is uh, a pretty standard kick, similar to Mario's and a lot of other character who does this uh, uh, this holding position of a neutral air. Um, it's a pretty good move since it has a really a long active hitbox so um, it's really easy for Link to hit your opponent and this move in particular I like to call it the drop kick since you can since you can use this move whenever and you don't necessarily have to hit your opponent at the beginning you can you can be using this move quite before hitting your opponent, so I like doing that whenever I have the chance. Um, and after doing that, I follow up with either a grab and a throw, or I just do this and 
do something like that. Um, so yeah. Uh, nothing too special. It doesn't have too much knockback. As you can see here, it's quite easy to do a follow-up. Um, higher than 100. This move will slightly kick your opponent away. Uh, but this move won't kill like a lot of other characters do. And now for the 4 there, which is a swing of the sword, actually 2 swing of the sword. Um, it is also quite powerful, but it acts slightly slower, which means his 4 there um, has a little bit of starting lag. As you can see there, he took a little bit of a moment when doing that. Um, and so yeah, but this move has a lot of active frames, so like I said before with uh, the neutral air, this move is really good at uh, hitting your opponent um, like whenever you want. Like, it's hard to say it. Um, like it's easy for Link to hit your opponent with this move since it has a lot of active frame, obviously. Um, that's the whole point of this move since it swings its swords twice. Uh, not a lot of combos can be made with this move since it has a lot of knockback. Like, uh, if you only hit your opponent with the first hit, uh, it doesn't deal a lot of damage and doesn't have a lot of knockback. Maybe then after that you can do a follow up. Haha. <laughs> Um, but if you hit with your second, you'll deal 12 damage instead of 9. And has way more knockback, even at a low percentage. So you're really trying to aim for this first hit for comboing. Um, and you really want to aim for the second hit whenever you try to kill your opponent. Uh, the second hit kills the opponent pretty easily at uh, 100 plus so it's a pretty fair uh, move I would say so yeah other than that um, there's the back aerial uh, which is also the same Link kicks twice from the back um, it doesn't do a lot of damage, um, however, it does have some small knockback from the second kick as well. So essentially, it functions the same way, except that um, it has slightly more knockback for both of his kicks. Um, the first one deals 5 damage, the second one deals um, about 8 damage, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, you can also combo with the first hit, however it is harder to set up since um, uh, this move has slightly less active frame than the first one, um, and it goes out really quick. It is still possible, except that most of the time it would be highly likely you'll hit your opponent with the second hit. So. It's not really recommended to combo with this move. And other than that, this move doesn't really do much favor in killing, so I do not recommend this move for KOing. Which is kind of a bummer since a lot of characters, like 80% of other characters, the back air is basically the strongest move. This move, the only thing uh, good about it is that it comes out quite fast. It has basically no um, starting lag or whatever. Um, so yeah. Now on to his up aerial, which is uh, he points in the air with his sword. If uh, your opponents land on the sword, he's gotta lose his ass. Uh, so basically you can use this whenever you want. Uh, when your opponent is in the air, you can hit them. So, 
so whenever your opponent is in the air you can just use this move freely since this move like all previous move has also a lot of active frame as long as link holds his sword in the air it is an active frame so it can hit your opponent and uh, this move can kill also pretty easily um, since it deals a lot of damage and knockback um, other than that it doesn't have anything too special it has a lot of starting starting lag so it's not necessarily good for anything other than to hit your opponent in the air and to do small combos at low percentage say you can do an up throw then you do um, an up air that's basically the most basic way you can use this move in a combo but other than that you cannot really utilize this in other ways since it is one of the moves that uh, has a lot of lag and now for Link's last aerial move which is the down air it hasn't been changed in any way except that it has less landing lag previously this move used to have a lot of landing lag like this move Link would stick his sword in the ground and he would stay there for like half a year before using another move. And the animation of him pulling up the sword would last like three times as long, which is actually insane. Um, and Link's down B is good for Meteor Smash since it has a really large hitbox. Basically, if you could hit with the side of the sword like this, it would still count as a hit, even though it it isn't a clean spike hit. Like there's actually sweet spot, so if you hit from the side, it would go diagonally. Uh, so if you want to do a spike, it's the first few frames and in the middle of the sword that you want to aim your opponent at to be able to perform a clean meteor. Um, so if you try to hit your opponent after like a few frames after performing this move, it wouldn't do a meteor smash, it would just do a normal hit. Um, since this move has a lot of active frame, the game wouldn't allow Link to have all those active frame um, reserved for meteor smashing, if you know what I mean. So basically the first few frames that Link's pull out his sword and does this move is are the frames that does the meteor smashing. Um, after that the hits are normal hits so it would knock the opponent uh, sideways and stuff. Um, the last thing about this move is uh, you cannot do a down air while grabbing as you can see since it has a lot more active frame and also has a lot of lag so you can't uh, edge guard your opponent into a meteor smash since if you do that you'll guarantee die and uh, Link can't recover it in any way and other, th other stuff about this move is that if you even when you try to use this move from the ground you want to make sure that you hit your opponent because if you don't there's a high chance that you'll go off stage quite easily unless you save your second jump So right here you use your second jump and come back pretty fairly, um, but if you don't, you can't do a clean recovery since it has a lot of lag. Um, so yeah, and not too much combo potential since then again, a lot of lag, like I said it like 3 million times, 
but all of his aerials has a lot of active frames, which is pretty good. Um, some of them has a little bit of startup and a little bit more ending lag than the, the average character, but it's still less than um, in previous games compared to himself. Other things about his uh, basic move, there's still the grab. Uh, the grabs are still pretty basic. Not too much crazy shenanigan that you can pull off. Except a few percentage like this. You can do a few chunk of damage while doing these. Um, so it's only fair to combo with the, the down throw and the up throw since uh, they are the only two moves that has the less knockback. The other two moves has insane knockback for absolutely no reason. Uh, the forward throw and the back throw, uh, which makes it impossible for Link to combo. So Link only has to rely on the down throw and the up throw for combo. So yeah, and I also said before that Ling no longer uses the, the claw shot, uh, so it's just a standard grab. And Ling also deals less damage when hitting your opponent while grabbing. He used to do 2 or 3 damage, I believe. Uh, I read on the wiki that it deals slightly less damage. So that's about it, I believe. And now we can move on to the combo section. And now for Link's combo, which is not um, fully impressive. Um, since Link is uh, slightly slower than the average character, um, Link will rely more on his uh, range attack, so basically the bow, the boomerang, and most importantly, the, the bomb nail. Um, so he doesn't really have a lot of combos except for a few basic ones that I showed you earlier. So starting with the grab one for the most basic ones. So down throw into up tilt can hit that a few times before your opponent reacts. You can do a up throw with a up air and similarly you can do an up throw with a neutral B, a neutral air I mean. And those are pretty much it with the with the grabs. You can also do the same thing with the down throw. So you do a down throw with a neutral air. Um, back air and front throw, I mean front throw and uh, back throw are useless because of the knockback, so not too much comboing with that. Um, other thing um, that you can do pretty consistently is that uh, you can do a drop kick into uh, the jabs, which is fairly simple, not too much crazy stuff going on. Uh, the only thing that you want to be aware of is that uh, since the knockback of this move is actually quite small, like it barely moves your opponent at low percentage, you want to make sure that uh, um, this move guarantees this uh, this jab follow up. There are characters like uh, Pit and Roy that can do a slightly quicker jab than you, than Link, since uh, they're already on the ground and doesn't have any lag, he would quickly follow up with a jab, nullifying this combo. So if you want to do this combo, you want to make sure that you're guaranteed to do um, the follow-up or else it would be kind of useless since uh, you're only doing this for doing it like you're not making anything out of it um, so like I said before if a character is slightly faster than you um, 
they can nullify this move quite easily by uh, using their own jabs. So, uh, for example, Pit, if I do this and try to do a jab, um, I would do this, then Pit would immediately do a follow-up. Since uh, he doesn't receive that much of knockback, he could follow up quite easily after I've hit him with the neutral air. Um, so it's one small note to keep in mind, but other than that, this uh, combo most of the time is pretty consistent. Other things that I mentioned also earlier is this move that you can combo quite easily. It's a pretty standard air jab. Like, it looks like an air jab because it does almost the exact same thing as the jab. Um, so you could do these and quickly grab your opponent, then do the, all the other stuff that I said previously. Um, so yeah, you can also do this with the, the back air, which is functions si similarly. Um, so not too much to talk about here. And, and the rest of the combos really relies on Link's projectile games, uh, since I'm not playing with an actual uh, human player right now, it's really hard to showcase these combos because it not, it's not necessarily setups or anything, um, there are people who utilizes a lot of their bomb, other uses a lot of their arrows, other uses a lot of their boomerang games, so there's not really a clear way of doing combos with these particular moves. A lot of players play Lynx um, quite differently. I play Lynx probably different uh, than most players out there. Um, so there's not any clear combos on how to use uh, the projectiles. Like the point of the projectiles is to space your opponent and whenever you have the chance when the opponent is at a higher percentage you can come in closer and make your opponent feel more vulnerable since all of Link's attack like I said before have a lot of active frames and are super powerful like the up air, this move kills quite easily at 110 or 20. So yeah. So that's literally and quite literally everything that Link can do for his sake of comboing. Um, not the most uh, crazy stuff that you've seen in this category. But um, I'll show you the character showcase right now to make up for what I said, since I can't really show you the combos here. So roll the clips. <laughs> <laughs> 